I wonder what you mean when you use the word I. I've been very interested in this problem for a long, long time. And I've come to the conclusion that what most civilized people mean by that word is a hallucination. That is to say, a false sense of personal identity that is at complete variance with the facts of nature. And as a result of having a false sense of identity, we act in a way that is inappropriate to our natural environment. And when that inappropriate way of action is magnified by a very powerful technology, we swiftly begin to see the results of a profound discord between man and nature. As is well known, we are now in the process of destroying our environment as a result of an attempt to conquer it and master it. And we have not realized, therefore, that our environment is not something other than ourselves. In assuming that it is, we have made a great mistake and are now paying the price for it. But most people would agree with the lines of the poet who said, I, a stranger and afraid, in a world I never made. Because we have the strong sensation that our own being inside our skin is extremely different from the world outside our skin that while there may be intelligence inside human skins and while there may be values and loving feelings, outside the skin is a world of mechanical process which does not give a damn about any individual and which is basically unintelligent, being gyrations of blind force and so far as the merely biological world is concerned, gyrations of libido, which is Freud's word for blind lust. It should be obvious that the human being goes with the rest of the universe. Even though we say in popular speech, I came into this world. Now, it is not true that you came into this world. You came out of it in the same way as a flower comes out of a plant or a fruit comes out of a tree. And as an apple tree apples, the solar system in which we live and therefore the galaxy in which we live and therefore the system of galaxies in which we live, that system peoples. And therefore, people are an expression of its energy and of its nature. If people are intelligent, and I suppose we have to grant that if, then the energy which people express must also be intelligent because one does not gather figs from thistles and grapes from thorns. But it does not occur, you see, to the ordinary civilized person to regard himself or herself as an expression of the whole universe. It should be obvious that we cannot exist except in an environment of earth, air, water, and solar temperature, that all these things go with us and are as important to us, albeit outside our skins, as our internal or organs, heart, stomach, brain, and so forth. Now, if then we cannot describe the behavior of organisms without at the same time describing the behavior of their environments, we should realize that we have a new entity of description. Not the individual organism alone, but what would now be called a field of behavior, which we must call rather clumsily, the organism environment. You go with your environment in the same way